Welcome to Frankenstein's Fabrics product tutorials. Now, this product tutorial is for Mary Ellen's Best Press Spray Starch, which is this lovely bottle here. Now, Mary Ellen's Best Press Starch is a water-based starch in a spray bottle, as you can see. It is not an aerosol like traditional starches, which you find in the supermarket. And I find that this spray starch is much gentler on quilting fabrics. So I'll give you a quick demonstration about how to use them and then I will go through some of the key points about it which makes it much better to use than your general starches. So because we are using our uh, Lavender Fields fragrance here, it also comes in uh, Rose, Caribbean, Peaches and Cream, Citrus Grove, and scent free for those who don't do very well with fragrance. Uh, so what we do is we're not soaking the fabric, we're spraying it. You know, this is just a fat quarter here from Mum's quilt. And if you want to follow along with what Mum is making, head over to my blog on www.frankensteinsfabrics.com. Now, what we do is we spray it on this side, so we turn it over. You'll have to excuse, I'm holding the camera in one hand and using one hand to do all the work. So what we do now is because it's turned over. Now this is part of why Mary Ellen's is a better starch because she's devised the way to prevent scorch marks, residue, any kind of burn or damage to your fabric with traditional starches. That's also due to the aerosol can. There's certain chemicals in an aerosol that end up on your fabric as well. It's not just the starch in those cans. So, we're starching, we're not ironing, so press and hold. The best thing I love about this starch is that while you're ironing your fabrics, the heat activates the scent and it all smells lovely. It's very lavendery in here at the moment. So what we're doing is we're working our way across the fabric pressing and holding the iron in position and then just pushing away and we're going to keep going until we've done the whole fat quarter now mum's quilt is a very economical quilt it's using a fat quarter as the feature and then some 50 centimeter pieces of homespun, but all of that is detailed on the blog. She's very excited about doing this quilt. Okay, so now we just do the last bit. Now, we washed all these fabrics before we started because we had some blues and some purples and we didn't want anything to run, uh, hence all the fraying. Now, I detail in the blog post about fraying and washing and all of that sort of thing. Now, I'm not a stickler for washing fabrics. I have been known to not bother and run the risk, but I have been doing it for quite a long time and I do know when a fabric is going to act up on me. Now... If you are using reds, anything from red through to burgundy, even occasionally a very dark hot pink, wash it. If you are using blacks, dark charcoals, and sometimes some of the mid greys, not necessarily the light greys, but from mid to dark to black, uh, your navies, and sometimes your browns, uh, wash them with a half cup of salt and a colour catcher, which you can find in the supermarket, and that should prevent the dye running. Now what happens is the salt and salt will retard the dye into the fabric. Now retarding the dye means setting the dye. You can buy commercial um, retarding products and chemicals, but salt does the job. Um, the color catcher, what it does is it catches any of the excess dye that may escape the fabric that's in the water, catching it in the water so it doesn't float back into your fabrics after you've done them. 
So then all you have to do is hang your, hang your fabrics out to dry once they've been washed. And then you starch them so you can get them back into cutting condition and you're ready to go. Okay, so now we've ironed this side. What we do now, this is the side we've just ironed. Now the starch is on the other side. So now what we do is we're starching this side. So same process. So now we turn this over and we go again. Now it may seem like a waste and you will find that some fabrics won't need both sides starching. Batiks especially, you won't need starch. Um, they are quite firm fabrics anyway so you won't need to worry too much about them. Now because I'm using home, we're using homespun for mum's quilt, uh, we're starching them because um, we're going through the whole process with mum. Mum is learning no bad behaviours, unlike me. Um, so what we're doing is the whole process and that way all of you out there in blogland can follow along and do this properly. Now, disclaimer on all of that is that if you choose not to wash your fabrics, you do run the risk. And that is totally your call. Um, I am aware of the risks and I do know fabric. I've been working with fabric for quite a long time now and I know when a fabric's going to play up. So I, if I start, if I hear the little voice in my head that says, you know, this fabric's going to be nasty, then I will wash it. I don't always wash fabrics, but if I wash one fabric in a quilt, I'm washing them all because we've also got shrinkage that we need to worry about. Now, cotton fabrics generally shrink at a three to five percent of their total overall quantity so be warned it will shrink um, but three to five percent generally is acceptable an amount of shrinkage and if you do your quilts um, and then wash them the shrinkage will make them look aged it'll just crinkle slightly and it'll have that slight vintage look to it now this is all done it's nice it's firm back to cutting quality which means it'll stay straight doesn't feel like cardboard if I'd used an aerosol starch it would be much firmer and it'd be too stiff and then when we wash it out we're, we're running the risk of having to wash it several times because we've got to get all this residue out now Mary Ellen's best press starch um, is available on my handmade web store details will be listed in the video description and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. And if you'd like to see more of these product tutorial videos, please subscribe to my channel. Bye.